Okay, greetings from Hamburg and welcome everybody to the Wednesday morning session of Amplitude 2020, the online edition. Uh, before we start, uh, let me quickly mention that uh, Slack, uh, yes, uh, uh, has been very useful uh, like for ongoing discussions among the participants and uh, all of you listening, if you haven't tried it yet, uh, you are uh, encouraged to give it a try. Uh, and with that, uh, it's a great play. After that, it's a great pleasure to welcome uh, Song He from the Institute of Theoretical uh, Physics in the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Beijing, who will be our first uh, speaker of the day. And he will uh, talk to us about uh, combinatorial geometries for scattering amplitudes. Welcome, Song. Thank you. Uh... I'd like to begin by thanking the organizers for uh, making this Zoom platitudes happen and uh, also for the opportunity to talk. So I will try to entertain you with some um, geometric structures underlying scattering amplitude that's been discovered recently uh, based on collaborations with uh, Nima, Thomas, Julio, and Hugh uh, in, in, in these papers. And also uh, in a paper hopefully will appear this week uh, with Zhen Jie, uh, Prussians, and Chi. Okay, so uh, we have actually uh, seen a variety of combinatorial geometries, always some, uh, all of them with some uh, factorizing boundary structures underlying scattering amplitudes. And most uh, famous examples, of course, the modelized space, uh, not only for string amplitude, but also for QFD amplitudes uh, by scattering equations and uh, uh, ambitwister strings. And another example is this positive Grassmannian uh, for the own shell diagrams and the all loop amplitudes in planar equals four. Uh, and all these are in some configuration space, I would say. And uh, the first example that we have uh, geometry underlying amplitude directly in uh, kinematic space is the amplitude hedron we written in, uh, uh, in the momentum twister space. And you are here in the next talk about also amplitude hedron written in momentum space. And more recently, we've seen examples even for a theory as simple as by a joint phi q. So if tree amplitude can be described by some kinematic associated hedron living in the uh, space of Mandelstam variables. And this has been nicely generalized to a class of polytope called cl uh, a cluster polytopes, where for the type A, B, C, D, they give you a uh, phi cube amplitude uh, through one loop. And you'll hear from Nima's talk about also higher loop uh, cases. And in my talk today, I'll actually focus on uh, some uh, a way of generalizing string amplitudes and also generalizing the modular space to the so-called cluster configuration space, which also lead to the notion of uh, binary geometries. And uh, I, I won't talk about it, but, but there will be actually a lot of talk today uh, concerning the positive configuration space or the tropical Grassmannian, which are relevant for the N equals four super amulets. So these are just some examples. But let me uh, guide you very quickly, uh, give you a flavor of what, what, what the kinematic hedron and the cluster polytope look like. So, in the kinematic space of n particle scattering, uh, uh, this set of conditions called ABHY condition define a subspace, n, n, n minus three dimensional subspace in, in this uh, kinematic space. And, and uh, that makes us to realize a so-called asotrohedron polytope in, directly in this space. So these are some examples. And the canonical form of this uh, polytope, this associohedron, actually give you the bi-join phi cube tree amplitude, as you can see uh, already for four point. So I want to emphasize that this is a geometric picture where, of, where the Feynman diagram expansion is just a very special uh, triangulation of the polytope. And uh, this picture allows us to find even a hidden symmetry of a uh, phi cube amplitude, uh, analog of this dual conformal symmetry for n equals four. And uh, if you put this planar variable xij in uh, 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 this one plus one dimensional lattice, and uh, what, what we call mesh, then the ABHY condition can be, the original of the ABHY condition can actually be viewed as a discrete version of wave equation living in this one plus one dimension. So this is wave equation. And more generally, actually for every uh, causal diamond living in this uh, kinematic space time, you have a Gauss law uh, like the ABHY condition. And the crucial property of the associohedron, namely it has factorizing boundary structure. If you go to a facet, it's given by a product of two lower dimensional associohedron. This is ensured now uh, in the continuum limit by the causal structure of the kinematic space time. I won't have time to uh, go into the detail. Uh, uh, 
So if we if we think a bit more abstractly, the uh, this time evolution picture in the kinematic space time uh, can be viewed as actually a walk on the quiver of uh, type A uh, thinking diagram. So uh, uh, this allows us to generalize to 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 to, to other cluster uh, other finite type and make connection with cluster algebra. So actually, uh, uh, the the way you build a polytope is by walking on this quiver diagrams every time you mutate on a source and you create a new facet by this condition. And this condition for the type A case give us back the ABHY condition. But now you can uh, do it for any quiver diagram. But it turns out that only for thinking diagram, you have a chance to consistently uh, stop this process and get a finite polytope. And this will be the polytope, the so-called general association of finite type uh, thinking diagram. And they are, they are also, not, uh, we'll, we'll call them cluster polytopes here. So uh, for the ABCD type of the uh, cluster polytope, they actually give you phi cube m to the tree level, the tadpole, all the one loop tadpole diagrams and the one loop complete uh, planar integrand. And if, uh, of course, for higher loops, you would encounter infinite case. So let's just look at the type D. Actually, the, 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 its boundary also uh, has this factorizing structure, but now it can be A times D or just an A, which corresponds to the factorization and forward limit of the one loop amplitude. Okay, so here's the outline of the main thing I I'm gonna talk today. Uh, uh, I won't talk this uh, Grassmannian uh, uh, string integral. So let me, let me, let me start with the string canonical for, string canonical forms first. Uh, this are a, a class of generalization of the open string amplitude and everyone's familiar with this, that uh, you have the park taylor form integrated over the positive part of the modular space just with the Cobalt nielsen factor. But we want to rewrite this integral. Uh, so if we choose a positive parameterization of the moduli, uh, positive part of the modular space, the integral looks like that. So this is the uh, canonical form of the integration domain. And you have some factor here that regulate uh, uh, po possible divergence as zero, and then some polynomial raised to negative power. The polynomial we ask to be uh, some polynomial with only positive coefficients. Uh, this will regulate that could regulate divergence at infinity. So this kind of integral is what we call stringy canonical forms. Of course, there's a long history studying such integrals, but I want to emphasize that here we're actually studying a differential form. We just the integral with the top form of this capital X uh, 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 coordinate. And this differential form will allow us to see the geometry behind the integral and many remarkable property uh, more naturally. So for one thing, the leading order in the alpha prime expansion of this, this kind of integral, uh, and also the residues on, on this pose are all controlled by a polytope P. So there's a polytope P behind uh, such integral. And the integral is really string-like because, for example, it's meromorphic function where the poles are just integer shifts of the, the pose at the leading order. And there's also exponential softness and so on. And we'll also see a universal uh, phenomena, which is the uh, scattering equation or saddle point equation concerning such integrals. So let's start with the trivial case where you have, you have one polynomial. So if you just have one polynomial, then there's a nice result that the integral uh, converges if the vector, d-dimensional vector x is inside the Newton polytope of this polynomial. Okay, this is a Newton polytope, uh, weighted by c. And also the leading order of the integral is actually given by the canonical function of this Newton polytope evaluate at x. Actually, from here, it's already very uh, simple to generalize to the general case where you have m such polynomial raised to some power. Then what's controlled uh, uh, the, the leading order of the integral is this Minkowski sum of the Newton polytopes weighted by c. So the convergence also controlled by that. And we can literally uh, uh, dress it with the, 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 the top form to say that this leading order of this differential form gives the canonical uh, form of the Minkowski sum. So actually this integral provides alpha prime deformation of the canonical form. Uh, you can do it for any uh, polytope. And uh, equivalently, we can also say the leading order of the integral is given by volume of the dual polytope or the tropical function of this integral. So let's apply this integral to the ABHY associohedron. So there's a very nice property of the, the associohedron, ABHY associohedron is that if you, uh, turn off all this constant C. Remember, we have uh, all, all this constant, positive constant uh, in the, in the ABHY condition. If you turn off all of them except one, then you get a singular piece. 
and then uh, uh, you, you get all these simple, simple pieces, and then the uh, association is given by a Minkowski sum of all these simple pieces. So actually, uh, it's very natural to consider uh, a stringy canonical form for it. Uh, so for, for, for five particles, there are three such pieces, a triangle and two segments. The Minkowski sum gives you this pentagon, this two-dimensional association. And the natural thing to do, the most natural polynomial you can write down for this triangle and the line segments are, are like this. And if you put it together, this is nothing but the five-point string amplitude written in positive coordinate. So this nicely works for any number of points that the most natural polynomial you can write down for such a uh, Minkowski sum of your ABHY associohedron give you the cobalt nielsen factor and the, the whole string integral. So in this sense, we rediscovered the whole string amplitude from ABHY associohedron living in kinematic space without ever mentioning the bulk space time or, or uh, the, the, the world sheet, actually. And I'll, I also want to introduce two classes of examples that generalize string, string amplitude in a very special way. The first is the uh, uh, string canonical form for generous associohedron of finite type. So you can write down this integral over the positive part of a cluster variety uh, mod by torus action, where you put this cluster variables raised to some power. And the leading order actually nicely is given by the ABHY cluster polytope. And in this sense, for ABCD type, the, this, this integral provides the alpha prime extension of the phi cube amplitudes, which has factorization property even at finite alpha prime. And a second class is actually the, uh, the, the, this stringy integral over the uh, positive gross menu mod by torus action. So if you integrate over uh, this canonical form and now put all the minor to some power, you, you, you have this integral where for, it can be viewed as a higher K generalization of the, of the uh, open string integral because for K equals two, it goes back to the string, string amplitude. And in this case, it's quite non-trivial to compute the Minkowski sum as explained in this paper. And the normal fan of this polytope you obtain is isomorphic to the tropical positive grasp mania. You will hear uh, more about it in, 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 in other talks. So these two classes are all very nice uh, uh, extension of string, string amplitude. And let me also give you some uh, uh, a switch to this uh, uh, idea of generalized scattering equations. So this is a, a, another uh, important observation about the, uh, such integrals. So if you take the saddle point equations, these are saddle point equations for, the, for, the, for the, uh, uh, such an integral, uh, and pull it back to the subspace where the polytope lives, then it provides you a map from the integration domain exactly to that polytope. So you rewrite your scattering equations as a as a one-to-one -one map uh, uh, to that polytope. And uh, by this theorem uh, given in this paper, uh, you see that uh, the, the canonical form of this polytope can actually be computed by a push for. So you can just write down this canonical form in the, of the integral and the in integration domain and summing over solutions, you also get the canonical form of the polytope, which is, which is also the alpha prime to zero limit. So we see that alpha prime to zero and to infinity limits are indeed deeply connected. And you can also rewrite it as a CHY-like formula for the canonical function. Uh, so, so this is really a general phenomenon that a few theory limit, alpha prime to zero limit of such integral is also given by the push forward by summing over saddle points, uh, which appear at higher energy. It has nothing to do with stream per se. And if you do apply it to stream integral, of course, you re re rediscover that the uh, the CHY formula for bijoint uh, phi cube. In this case, you are really having a one-to-one -one map from the modular space, which is also a sociohedron, to the ABHY sociohedron. Uh, and the push forward give you the, the, the phi cube amplitude. I want, also want to say that string amplitude, or the cobalt nielsen factor here is very special because the number of solutions actually undergo a huge reduction compared to some general polynomial write down for the sociohedron. So N equals, so N minus three factorial is actually the smallest number you can have. In this sense, CHY formula are very efficient. Uh, and uh, of course, this number of solutions is, is, uh, is known to be equal to the dimension of space of all the integral functions or the uh, dimension of twisted cohomology. So you can actually compute them for, for, for these examples in cluster case or in the grass mining case, which is also being studied in the uh, context of this uh, higher K generalization of uh, bijoint amplitude. And all, all I've said about the scattering equation and the uh, um, twisted cohomology, of course, clearly related to uh, intersection theory. And uh, it'd be very nice if we can apply also this to Feynman integrals. Uh, be 
interesting to connect it to, to, to recent works and also talks you will hear tomorrow in, in this context. So uh, let me also mention that there's complex string integrals. So everything so far is just about the positive part, but you can also more square the whole everything and then integrate in the complex space. Very nicely, the leading order is still controlled by the same polytope, uh, which is the, 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 the Minkowski sum of, of all these Newton polytopes. Um, but more generally, the complex integral doesn't have to be just a mod square one. You can put some uh, integer shift uh, to the, to the um, Z bar part. So in addition to the mod square, you have this integer shift. And that will give you a more general complex integral. And uh, the leading order now can be computed still by the Minkowski sum, but this Minkowski sum may give you something unbounded. So now you can have this uh, uh, polytope that has uh, facets at infinity. But the, the canonical form of such an unbounded polytope is still finite. That gives you the leading order. So if you apply it to the uh, closed string integral with two ordering, or this open string integral now as the Z integral, you rediscover the unbounded uh, associohedron where some facets are at infinity or the M alpha beta the, the, uh, for its canonical form. Similarly, un unbounded polyhedron also appear for the so-called bicolor theory where you have some matter particles. So last thing I talk about the stringy canonical form is I want to introduce this configuration space by the dual U variable. So it's a little bit abstract, but if you, if you think about the polytope which are bounded by this linear, uh, linear functionals, uh, we, for, for the facets, then you can rewrite this in this, top, this D plus M dimensional space where you put all the X and the C together. That defines you actually a big polyhedron living in this D plus M dimension. And the, the convergence condition, we said a, a point is inside the, uh, this, uh, inside this uh, polytope cannot be described also in terms of a positive combination of the vertices of this big po polyhedron. So in this way, the convergence condition for the integral become very trivial. You just say that all the, when you rewrite the, any point inside it as a linear combination, a positive linear combination of the, the vertices, you just ask all the coefficients to be positive, the, the integral will converge there. So to make this manifest, you just do this rewriting of all the uh, Colbert nielsen factor to this uh, U raised to this exponent, which are the positive uh, coefficient here. So we discovered a dual variable u, uh, uh, and there is a special case where if you have the big polyhedron is just a simplex, so the number of facets here will equal to d plus m, then the u's are all multiplicative independent. In this case, the u's are really nice uh, uh, way of describing the, the whole thing. So for every facet of a polytope, there is exactly one u goes to zero that allow you to approach that facet. Uh, uh, so this is true for the cluster case, but not true for all this Grassmannian case for higher k. Uh, in those cases, uh, there's not a unique way of rewriting. So the u's will not be multiplicative uh, independent. So we call this space formed by this u uh, variables, which are constrained, of course, by some polynomial equations, uh, the configuration space of, of the integral. Okay, so let me switch to the binary uh, cluster, uh, cluster polytope uh, and generalization of string amplitude. So they are actually just applying this configuration space to the cluster string integral that I just mentioned. But I will take a different road here. Let's go back to the uh, basics of the cluster polytope again. So as I said, the, bon the boundary of this cluster polytope is described by thinking diagrams. So every time if you go to a boundary, this amounts to remove a node in the thinking diagram. And then you have some factorization uh, uh, like this for A, B, C, or type D. So ABH1 already realized this in kinematic space, but we want to ask if there's a, even a more rigid way of realizing uh, this thing. And uh, it turns out that the configuration space, this U space is a way to realize it. And this leads to the so-called binary geometry. So the U's will satisfy, for this cluster polytope case, the U will satisfy such an equation. So if every time if a U goes to zero, it will force all this U that appear in this product, which are the, the U's for the incompatible facets in the polytope it will force them all to go to one. So this is what we mean by a binary geometry. It's very special that you can have such a geometry uh, uh, for some polytope. And once you have this geometry, once you have cluster, uh, cluster case, you can have such a binary geometry, you can rewrite your integral where the cobalt nielsen factor just become u raised to this uh, power uh, which are given by the facets. Okay, so let me, let me describe them in detail. Already for type A, it's very interesting that the U equations we have is this one minus each UIJ given by product of UKL, where 
KL are the diagonals crossing IJ in the angle. Okay, so this you, you, you equation have an N minus three dimensional solution space that leads to the configuration space of type A. So the open set is just the, 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 the modular space and you, you can have a partial compatibility uh, uh, for it. And I want to point out that algebraically, you can find that this space has exactly the same boundary structure as the asotrohedral. This, this holds even in a complex space. So for every u goes to zero, uh, the incompatible u goes to one. So then the remaining u must fall into the two uh, polygon. So they, they, will, they will satisfy the u equations for these two uh, uh, lower dimensional asotrohedral. So this is a binary geometry. And uh, if you further ask the u to be positive, all the u will be between zero and one, and this gives you the positive part of the, uh, the space, and it has a curvy shape of the asotrohedral. So, so in the complex case, it has this boundary structure, but a positive case is literally a asotrohedral polypole. And you can also write on its canonical form in the type A case, uh, which is just given, the particular form can be written in terms of this u uh, in, in, in this way. So, uh, how do we see the wall sheet from this configuration space? It, it turns out this configuration space provides you a gauging invariant description of the modular space, and the use will be the cross ratio for n points. So to see this, you will, you will have to derive this uh, uh, very nice extended u equation from our u equation. So this gives you like, like two products of the uh, u variables add up to one for any given four points, and uh, uh, this. Turns out these constraints and also these trivial constraints about the uh, product of the use, they are all the constraints satisfied by cross ratio of n points on P1. So it depends on this four point. So in this way, you just start from your U equation and discover that uh, these products of the use, including themselves, are just cross ratios. And uh, if you further ask the U to be positive, all the cross ratio are between zero and one, it means the n points are ordered. Of course, you want to see also other orderings. How can you see other orderings uh, from, the, uh, from this U language? Uh, so, so far, we've restricted U to be positive. Then you see the original ordering, of 1 to N. But for other orderings, you need to consider different sign choices for this, for this U variable. So it turns out that there's a very simple way to get it. So, so all, the sign, all the sign patterns of U, which are allowed by this extended U equation, so Remember, if you have such an equation, you, are, uh, you cannot have both terms to be negative. Then all the same patterns allowed by the extended equation give you all your orders, all, all the connected components of the real space. So if you go from one ordering to another, you, you can perform some monomial transformation on this U, and then they, they satisfy still this extended U equation. And this exposes you actually there's a hidden permutation symmetry of the, of the uh, uh, configuration space. Okay, so we can generalize all this from type A to now to, to any finite type, cluster algebra. So the only new ingredient in this uh, equation, in this U equation, are the compatibility degree. Uh, uh, they, they, they now don't have to be zero or one. And these are, have standard definition in cluster algebra, but they actually also have a very nice uh, new definition from the, uh, the, the walk picture for ABHY polytope. So, so this compatibility degree from B to A it's just some integer Green's function uh, that if you, if you choose your B in the initial quiver with all the X to be zero and also uh, only uh, like a delta source in the, in the beginning. So if you solve your ABHY condition to get XA in this initial condition, that integer gives you the compatibility degree. For example, if you look at D4, the Dinkin diagram, you can do this walk and find all the compatibility degree and writing down this 16 uh, equations for the U equations with some compatibility degree. So this gives you the, the D4 uh, U equations. And similarly, you can do any finite type. And uh, 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 also these U equations are equivalent actually to the Y system equation uh, uh, that, that associated with this work. So once you find the U equations, you can, this U equation that uh, U plus product of U to some power equals one, they define you the configuration space. So actually there's N dimensional solution space and algebraically, it has the same boundary structure as the, uh, uh, as the uh, cluster polytope of, of, of this type. And it's binary. So you, you send a U to zero or the incompatible U goes to one. So it factorizes by removing a node in the Dinkin diagram. And in the positive case, this cuts out really a curvy uh, uh, cluster polytope for you. 
And it's a nice question to ask, what is the canonical form of the positive, positive part? And just similar to the uh, type A case, it's also written as this product d log u over one minus u for the u's that live in an acyclic quiver. And uh, uh, also, if you want to find other orderings, we have a conjecture that actually there are also these extended u equations for any finite type, uh, which are in bijection with the mutation relations of the cancer algebra. And uh, if you find all the sign patterns allowed by such extended u equations, they will give you all the uh, connected components. Okay, so once you have the, uh, the, the configuration space, you can have the uh, integral. And uh, uh, for type A, I already said, that if you write written them in, in terms of the u's, they give you the factorization at finite alpha prime, also for the closed string case. And now you can also do it for any finite type. You put, the, put this canonical form with this Cobain-Nielsen factor. And they give you some uh, uh, integral that, they, they, they explain the finite uh, factorization at finite alpha prime in a very manifest way also for the closed stringy uh, integral case. And the physical meaning of this finite type uh, cluster integral is still unclear. Although I have to say they contain the original string integral and uh, can be viewed as alpha prime deformation of one loop phi cube, say, for this uh, DN case. So uh, I'm gonna skip this. You can, you can just uh, do the, uh, also some point count to get all the topological property of this uh, space for all this finite type case. So, so, so uh, my time is, uh, uh, is up, I think. So I will, I, will, I will just spend the last few minutes, uh, last two minutes explaining some new results, which uh, you can actually get a family of binary geometries uh, in, a, in a much larger context, which are associated with a uh, generalized pyramidohedral. So let me just remind you that the generalized pyramidohedral can be defined as a Minkowski sum of some coordinate synthesis for a building set, which are a collection of subsets uh, of, uh, a collection of subsets. So this definition is really backing for some stringy canonical form. So if you define for every uh, coordinate, in every subset, uh, the polynomial is just the sum of all this uh, uh, xi, which are the singlets in the in the in the uh, in the in the subsets. Then you then you can define this integral for every generalized pyramidohedron. This will be a standard uh, stringy canonical form for the for 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 the integral. So here are the singlet part and here are all the, all the polynomial part. And uh, the leading order is give you the, the canonical function. Let me just give you some examples. So for simplex, these are all the singletons and the integral can be evaluated. It's just some generalized beta function. And the azojohedron and cyclohedron case also fall into, they are special case of uh, generalized pyramidohedron. And you can find they are actually the cluster integral of type A and B I just described. And the biggest one is the pyramidohedron where you have all the subsets. So this provides you a rigid stringy integral for the pyramidohedron itself. And uh, they have nice factorization property. And uh, the big polytope is always simplex, so you can find the u variables for them very nicely. And for example, the, uh, the u variables are equivalent to the ABHR realization in this sense that for pyramidohedron, the ABHR realization is just some alternating sum. So for example, for a two-dimensional pyramidohedron, these are the u variables. And you can also degenerate from pyramidohedron to get all the generalized pyramidohedron by setting some c to zero. And we can ask about the binary geometry question again. Actually, is the, are the cluster polytopes the most general binary geometries we're gonna find? Of course not. So this trivial example is like a simplex because for every facet goes to zero, there's no facets uh, that's incompatible with it. So the simplex has this U equation that uh, when you take a U to zero, it just goes for, to become the lower dimensional uh, simplex. And uh, uh, we, we want to have, in general, this U equation, a more, more general U equation for binary geometry, which is one minus U equals product U times a polynomial. And as long as that polynomial goes to one, when, when, the, when the U goes to zero, this also gives you a binary geometry. So for the cluster point of case, the U equation is perfect since all these polynomials are just one, but you can have more non-trivial ones. And our claim is that uh, the integral we just write down for any generalized pyramidohedron their configuration space is always binary. So for every one of them, you have a binary geometry. So you can easily prove it for the pyramidohedron. I won't go through it. And the proof can be extended to also generalize pyramidohedron. So they have a slightly more complicated U equation, have some polynomial, which goes to one in the, in the, in the, in the limit. And, and these are, uh, in general, don't have perfect U equations, but there are special cases. Actually, you just look at the degeneration of the modular space that you also find new polytopes that has binary geometry that has uh, with perfect U equations. So for example, you set some constant of uh, 
your, your, your associohedron to zero, you rediscover some polytope whose U equations are also perfect. So it's some, some new binary geometry, just like the original modular space. Now you have some degeneration of it, also has perfect U equation. Similarly, you can do it for B, but we don't know if you can do it for other type because they involve some uh, uh, nonlinear factors. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here and just listed some uh, selected open questions for the integrals, for cluster algebra, for the geometry, and also more uh, physics related ones. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's thank Song for the very interesting talk. And now, yes, uh, please mute yourself again. And uh, I see that, uh, yes, Yara already has a question. So Yara, please go ahead. Yeah, I have two questions. Uh, so the first, uh, the stringy canonical forms, which are not directly string amplitudes. So uh, mm -hmm. what is exactly, just from the physics point of view, where would you see the difference? Because they factorize, they have ultra soft behavior. Do they just kind so of have they, wrong residues on the... So, so uh, I mean, stringy canonical form is just really very uh, large class of integrals. And uh, there's, a, uh, uh, there's still a lot of things wrong about it. Like already, if, when, when we say factorization, it doesn't really factorize into itself. So the cluster yeah. integral, the, the, in, inside of the cluster, stringy integrals are much better. So they, they really look very similar to string integrals, but I think the problem for them is with massive poles. So if you go to, so when I say the, uh, they have perfect factorization and massless poles, but if you go to massive poles, we still don't know if they, uh, yeah, if, if they, they, they are described by, 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 by some analog of this world sheet or right. things like that. So, so yeah, that's a problem. Now, do you have any idea what uh, can be the one loop string amplitude? You already spoke, you already said something about the alpha prime correction to the phi cube, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could so it be this, this type D, as, as I said, this type D, uh, there, there is a chance that this type D could be related to the one loop uh, string integral. I mean, it, it, you have to integrate the, the modular parameter to, to be able to compare with this one. So this provide you an alpha prime deformation of the one loop phi cube integrand. Yeah. It has loop momentum in it. It's, uh, it's, it's the deformation of the loop integrand. But we don't know if it's really uh, related to one loop string amplitude at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Do we have any more questions? I see Oliver has raised his hand. Nick early also have raised their hand. So let's go by order of, uh, yes. Uh, uh, chronological order. Oliver, go ahead. Oliver Schlotterer, you can unmute yourself and ask. Uh, thanks a lot for the beautiful talk, Asam. Uh, I was wondering about these complex incarnations of generalized string integrals. Um, did you check whether some simple examples have an echo of KLT relations or uh, single valued maps of the open string? Yeah, I think, uh, I, yeah I, think, I think the, in general, uh, the analog of KLT should, should always work. So you, you should always be able to write it as uh, some a product to open string integrals, but then the kernel has to be computed. The kernel uh, is, is, not, is not clear. I mean, this, this uh, for example, you, you can just use intersection theory to argue that the, 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 the pairing is always works that give you the complex integral written as uh, open string integral times the kernel, right? Obvi mm -hmm. Obviously, I don't know how to compute the kernel at the moment, like how, how simple they will be for for the examples we're interested in. But this form of rewriting complex integral, you are, you are talking about the Moss square integral, right? The, the, it, it, I, I think it can certainly be written as uh, two copy of uh, open string, open stringy integrals. Would you expect just more combinatorics on the, on the trigonometric functions? Or would you expect some more heavy deformations uh, new dependencies on the Mandelstam's. I'm not sure. I mean, even even like the the number n minus three factorial will change uh, oh, because sure. now you have different uh, set of points. So I, I, I actually I don't know how the kernel will look like. Uh, I mean, I don't even know how big the matrix is. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, and uh, next comes uh, yes, uh, Nick Early, who has also raised his hands. Nick, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, thanks for a very nice talk. Uh, just a comment, um, uh, question about uh, the class of generalized permutahedron. 
it's not true that every uh -huh. generalized permetahedron is a strict Minkowski sum of men, uh, of gen Right, right, right. Sorry, right, I, right. I, so, I, I meant the nestlehedron and its product. Yeah. It's, okay, it's so I mean, what I, what, what I mean, yeah, so some require a Minkowski difference, a kind of contraction. Difference, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those, those we haven't considered, so we restrict ourselves to the sum, Minkowski sum case, the special cost, yeah. Okay, okay, very good. Okay. Thanks. And then uh, Nima had raised his hand, but now he lowered it, it seems. No, I, I don't know what happened there. I just have a very quick question. Can you... Uh, uh, Remind us the generalized permutahedra, uh, at least when we um, uh, that they have some interpretation in terms of summing in the alpha prime goes to zero limit, summing classes of uh, 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 non planar diagrams. Can, can, can you just uh, remind us what the yes. story is? Yes, yes. Like for, yeah. Yes, yes. So, so for, for a special case of generalized permutahedron, uh, you can easily assign the, the so the, the canonical function describes you some of some uh, subsets of phi cube diagram, which are no longer planar. For example, for, for permetohedron, these are all the half ladder diagram. So uh, where, where you fix two points and you permute all the remaining particles. So, so, the, so, so this is really like an alpha prime deformation of some of all half ladder diagram of n factorial ones. So that's, that's, the, that's the, uh, the, the, if you want that, if you, if you put this exponent as those uh, Mandel stamps, then you have that, that, that physical interpretation. But not all genres from the Hijon. I, I don't know how to interpret all of them in this way, just some of them. Yeah. But if you just ask for classes of, uh, is it true that, uh, that if you just ask for, for uh, sums of subsets of non-planar uh, cubic graphs that factorize onto themselves, um, uh, are those all generalized from the There's nothing missing. From from that from that uh, sort of idea, is that right? I don't know. I don't know how to prove it, but but so far it's true in in, in all cases we study. Yeah. Julio, are you done, Nima? Did you want to elaborate or? No, thank you. Julio has also raised his hand. Go ahead, uh, Julio. Yeah, thank you. Very nice talk, Song. Uh, quick question. Do you think that the halohedron can be realized this way? So have you tried to, to see whether it has a oh, u plus u equation? I, I haven't thought about it. I'm, yeah, is, if, if, if it has the same, if it has the combinatorics of the genre as permodohedron, then I'm sure you can, you can do it. I don't think it does though. Okay, then, yeah, then. So this is, this is really special. So, so for example, for, for other uh, cluster type which cannot be realized as a genre as permodohedron, we still don't know how to do it. We still don't know what is the most natural way of writing down stringy integral for, for, for it. So halohedron probably also belong to this case. You need something, yeah, just like type D, you need something new. Maybe halohedron, you also need something new. Thanks. Sure. Do we have any more questions? Perhaps, uh, yes, I could ask. Uh, so, so, could you maybe clarify, perhaps an elementary question, but uh, where does the cluster algebra come in into the definition of the like stringy canonical form? Uh, does it come in, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, you mentioned that, of course, uh, at least uh, if you take the alpha prime to zero, it's related to the volume. Uh, of the cluster polyton, mm -hmm. but how can one, is it an input for the formula? I see you have those axes that uh, uh, like are... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so for the, for the finite type, certainly you can just write it down by putting all the cluster variables. You, 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 given some coefficient, just write down all the cluster variables and raise it to some power. This is the integral that encode the, the cluster, uh, uh, the, where, where the leading order you have, you, you, you really cover the volume, but this integral really has a lot of information. But for example, for, for Grassmannian case, this is just not, I mean, this is, this is an integral which lets you to probe, probe the uh, tropical positive Grassmannian. But uh, since, since, for example, for G4A and above, you have infinite uh, cluster algebra. So this is not like uh, really, you, this is a finite polytope as opposed to an infinite cluster algebra, if that's what you're asking, yeah. Yes, and in fact, since you brought this up, uh, yes, uh, the, the, new, the Mikoski sum of the Newton polytope for this case gives you the tropical Grassmannian. Uh, of course, in the story of, uh, let's say, n equals four, 
it's very natural to like partially tropicalize the Grassmannian, to also consider uh, just tropicalizing certain Pluker coordinates and not others, yeah. just to yeah. say, maintain uh, parity. Uh, how does this look uh, on your side? Is it possible to do also on your yeah, side? Yeah. So, so, so if you start with this Grassmannian integral and turn some, some of the exponent to zero, mm. then you can then you, then, you, then you obtain actually something that's smaller that, that you, 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 as you said, you're only uh, uh, tropicalizing some, say the, the blue curve with some property that, that, that appear here. Yeah. But also to make it bigger, uh, you can do anything. Six. Yeah, sorry. So the, the yes, uh, either from you or from him, I don't mind. So the, the, the point is that you again switch off some of uh, the uh, the axes say in this formula and this yes. corresponds to uh, yes uh, partially tropicalizing on the on the dual side and you can also go up you can put in more factors which yes. will, for example for g36 you can go up and get d4 or, or, or in, yeah in, in, in higher case you could try try that including more factors yeah cool okay thanks uh, any any last uh, minute questions? Anybody else? Uh... Okay, if not, uh, let's thank uh, Song one more time. Thank you.